All right, everybody. Hey, welcome. We're in week uh, three, actually chapter three, technically. Um, I said that's wrong. Chapter three, week two. Week uh, chapter three, week two. Perfect. And we're gonna be talking about taxes. Everybody's favorite topic is taxes. Um, Little updates. Check check your announcements. Um, moving forward, what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to release a uh, slideshow on Monday, a slideshow and lecture on Wednesday. I'll have some additional accompanying material um, as well, kind of kind of intersperse that, and then we'll give you I'll give you a quiz. Issue that on Friday. Just on, just make sure you turn it in by the um, by the following Monday. I think for this week I did it for. It, the, you can turn in by Tuesday, and because of all of the uh, complications I had this week, the quiz is 100% extra credit. And then I will also e start emailing you the um, the slideshows as well, so you'll have that um, for uh, for yourself at your, at your disposal. So today we're going to talk about taxes. Um, let's get into this. Am I recording yet? Oh, and additionally, and then I will send you the links, the, the Zoom links from our from these lectures. And I will also send you um, the same lecture because if some people have having issues with Zoom, a link to YouTube. Well, I'm going to put this up on YouTube as well, so so you'll have everything um, at your at your disposal at your, at your hands. Let's talk about taxes. Um, in pay in this in the book, the Personal Finance Version Seven, it's in page fifty-seven. I think in Personal Finance Six, it's page fifty-five, but. At the bottom, uh, left uh, third paragraph down, or technically maybe fourth paragraph down, uh, on page 57, there's a sentence that starts with the overriding. It says, the overriding objective of tax planning is to maximize the amount of money you can keep by legally minimizing the amount of taxes you pay. As long as it's done honestly and within the tax codes, there is nothing unethical or illegal about trying to minimize your tax bill. So... Basically, if, I'll read that again. The overriding objective of tax planning is to maximize the amount of money you can keep by legally minimizing the amount of taxes you pay as long as it's done honestly and within the tax codes. There is nothing unethical or illegal about trying to minimize your tax bill. So basically what they're saying right there in a nutshell is it's kind of a big game. Uh, you, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways built into the system, uh, the tax system, the tax code for you to, to, um, not pay some of your taxes, but as long as you do it in a, a, a legal way, you're going to take all of your expense, everything you had coming in on one column, everything you had, you had going out and then, um, try to lower that burden that you would have to pay on your taxes. And we'll kind of get into some of that stuff a little, a little bit later here. Um, here is the progressive tax structure, which is on, um, uh, yeah, it is on page 58. And this basically shows you kind of what the tax, um, uh, the, uh, how, much, how much you're liable to pay for, uh, for different uh, uh, tax, uh, uh, tax areas here. Here, so if you're, if you're earning between uh, $1 to $9,225, you're gonna pay 10% in taxes. Um, if you're making between uh, this is your gross uh, money before taxes um, between $9,226 and $37,450, 15% and so on. So if you're making under $413,000, uh, $413,200, uh, the max that you pay over that would be 39.5%. Um, uh, Keep in mind, that's just federal. Tax for the, for the state of California is on, on top of that. Um, currently, it's like, what, 10 11%. That might be going up. Who knows? It could be going up, uh, I've heard whispers, even as high as 16%. So um, potentially, if you're in the state of California and you are earning over, you know, 400, I don't know what the, I don't know what the state um, uh, levels are going to be. But um, if you're earning over a certain amount, you can have 40% taken away by or, or given to the government. Um, and then potentially another 15 uh, to, to the state. And I know there's arguments like why are we paying so much in taxes? There's an argument to why we pay that taxes are too much and, um, and 
why we have our taxes. I mean, if we want to have nice roads, if you want to have, you know, clean drinking water, if you want to have electricity, um, all that stuff goes to taxes. Um, how we allocate that money, uh, there's another argument um, to, uh, to that. Um, I'm not going to say we can get, you know, overly political with this, but I, but I won't, um, that there is responsibility for the people who we are giving our taxes to, to responsibly pay for that, uh, to, to, to allocate, to use those resources. And there's all kinds of horror stories about, you know, um, in the government paying, you know, you know, $10,000 for a toilet and stuff. And that's basically come, comes on, on us, the taxpayers. Um, but it, it, does it fix, does the system need to be fixed? Sure. Absolutely. Um, but do we need to pay taxes to have, um, uh, certain things in our society? Absolutely. Um, now we're getting to filing statuses real quick here. There's your, um, this is how you would, uh, statuses you would have you file on your, um, on your tax forms. If you're single, if, you, if you're unmarried, legally separated by divorce or separation, you can file under single. If you are married, um, you can file uh, filing jointly. That means married couples to combine their income and allow the deductions as one. So like my wife and I, we file jointly. So basically all of our money gets pulled together and then that's how, that's how we file. Now there are, there are married people who file separately and I'll get into that in a second right here this is when um the uh each spouse files his or her own tax return complete with independent incomes deductions and exemptions why would you do that um you're basically you're doing that because it gives you a financial advantage and a legal advantage you have one person who makes a lot of money and I think a person, maybe somebody who doesn't, and, the, and then one of them will basically, you can have a situation where one doesn't make a lot of money, but then you put all of the expenses on them. So they basically operate in a sense at a loss for that year. And then the people who, um, and then the person who makes more, but they can show that, 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 that they earn more. It's just kind of a strategic thing that, that, that you can do with um with your with your taxes and, and how you file some of it can have to do with your benefits too what kind of benefits you have what kind of retirement accounts you have um and what the tax implications are so there's all kinds of uh implications with that uh, there's a head of household which is basically you know an unmarried person that pays more than half of the cost of the upkeep uh for the household with an eligible dependent or child or relative that's um unmarried pays more than half the cost um so that's a situation where you have uh, let's say you have an adult child who's living in a house who is over 18 and they're the person who is responsible, maybe a parent is unmarried and they pay, pay more than half the cost of the, up, of the upkeep in the household, they're head of household. So they would get a bigger um, tax, they have bigger tax advantages um, when they file their taxes. Uh, qualifying widow or widower um, with dependent child. This is basically somebody whose spouse died within two years of the tax year and has to support that dependent child. They may use they may use the joint return tax, and they're based they're eligible for the, the highest uh, standard deductions. Just going to take home pay a little bit here. Uh, federal withholding taxes. Those basically just you know your taxes uh, based on your earnings combined with your withholding allowances claim. So when you when you can claim I am single, I'm claiming one. Uh, those are basically like your, your withholdings. And um, there's all kinds of different creative ways that you can get with that. Sometimes, remember I worked, used to work on a job and we would have a situation where, you know, if you had a big, a big check coming in, you would have, you would uh, claim, uh, uh, instead of claiming one, you would claim two, you claim three. Um, I would definitely, I'm not giving you advice on that. I would, I would definitely consult with a tax professional on that. Uh, this is your, this is FICA, your Federal Insurance Contributions Act. You really can't get away from that. You can't get away from kind of uh, playing with that because that's a, your taxes for Social Security. And we'll get into Social Security in a different different lecture. Um, I remember the first time I had a job, I thought I didn't, didn't take into consideration um, taxes. So I get my, you know, work hard, get my check. And I'm like, it was, uh, it was supposed to be like, like $300. And it ended up being, you know, like making like, 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 $230 to I'm like, where's the rest of this money? So I, I 
talk to my manager. I think there's a mistake on my check. And they said, nope, this is right. This is absolutely right. Uh, I had to come out for taxes. And that was a big kind of eye opener. I'm sure some of you probably had that, had that situation too. But once again, for us to, you know, to pay for, you know, our roads or water or electricity for, you know, for a lot of public resources, um, for unemployment, you know, so if, you know, when, if you lose a job, where, where does that money come from? You, you, you pay into that. You've earned that. So there's a lot of, um, uh, the government's big, the government's a big monster, not in a bad way, not in a good way, just saying what it is. It's just, it's just a big machine that, that needs, need, that needs to be fed. It needs to be fed basically just to kind of take care of all of us. Um, Three types, kinds of taxable income. First is your active income. That's the income you earned on your job, your wages, salaries. Say you have a regular job, you get a check. You get, you know, you have a, um, uh, you, you know, you have W two, and then um, you get your taxes automatically taken out. That's pretty much just active, active income. That could be income earned from job, wages, salaries, bonuses, tips, pensions, alimony. That's consistent money uh, coming in. Portfolio income, that's earnings uh, generated from investments. So if you're investing in the stock market, you're investing, investing in real estate, any type of investments that you have, portfolio, uh, that's part of your portfolio income. And there's passive income, um, which can be rental real estate. I said in portfolio as well. Port this, the difference between the portfolio here and the real estate rental income here is that if you had a port in your, part of your investment portfolio and you sold a real estate property, and you earn money from that sale, it's like a one-time sale, that's considered your portfolio income. Here on your passive income, that's if you had a house that you rented out for, for rental property, you had partnerships in a business, you had a um, some kind of an uh, online training type of, 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 of company or videos that you put out, and that's just kind of passively coming out. You put it up once, you do kind of, you do a lot of work at, at, one, at one time, but basically you're not, you're not, um, doing that as, as like a regular nine to five type job. I mean, you put in a lot of work, but it's more passive um, income. Capital gains, this is interesting. Capital gains, that's basically that if a capital asset is sold for more than you purchased it, you get tax capital gains. If you, that could be stocks, investments, that can be um, a home. So let's say you bought a home for a hundred thousand dollars or let's say, let's say you bought a home for a hundred thousand dollars, you know, 50, 40 years ago and you end up selling it for a million dollars, you would get taxed the difference, what you, what you earned on that, the $900,000, uh, you could be subject to, tax, to capital gains tax. Now it's currently between zero and 20% based on your overall income. Um, if you sold a bunch of, if you're active in, um, in trading stocks, you know, you're, kind of, you're a day trader or you're you know, an active you know, uh, a, a trader, you would get any type of income earned on um, uh, investments, uh, you'd be taxed capital gains. And that's kind of, like I said, between zero and 20% based on your overall income. And if Biden becomes, is elected president, it would be everything, all the indications <laughs> state that it would be 40% um, if you earn more than $1 million annually. Um, I don't know how they're going to do like, let's say that, 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 that example you bought, uh, somebody, you know, was, uh, there's a, a couple and, you know, he's a mailman and she's, you know, works in a, in an office at a, you know, at a, at a, at a, at a elementary school or something. And they bought the house, you know, 40 years ago in, you know, a nice area in Monrovia or something like that. And they bought it for a hundred thousand dollars. And now that house is worth, you know, you know, 1.1, let's just make that. And they are going to make a profit of $1 million. I don't know if they would lump in that 1 million into your annual income, um, or it's just kind of a one-off, but there's just, those are kind of that, that's what the, uh, your CPA is for and tax attorneys are for. Um, adjustments to your gross income. This is basically any um, allowable deductions you can take off of your pre-tax total. Example, like education, education expenses, IRA contributions, self-employment taxes, uh, self-employed health insurance alimony. And let's, let's get into a little bit about, about write-offs here. We always hear people say, I remember there's one episode of Seinfeld. And uh, he said, uh, Jerry said he had a big expense coming in. And Kramer said, don't worry about it. You can, you can write it off. And Jerry says, do you know, you, you don't even know, do you know what a write-off is? Said, yeah, of course I do. What is it? And he goes, 
I don't know. I don't know what write-off is. So we'll get into write-offs right here. Um, write-offs is basically something that you can write off of what you know, uh, what you owe in taxes. Imagine like you're going to go to, you go to a, uh, you go to a, a restaurant and your bill is going to be $200. You know, you lived it up, you know, you got a you know, decent little party there. You know, you ordered some drinks for everybody. You got the appetizers you got the, you know, the salads, you know, main course, dessert, and then your bill is going to be $200. But then you, but then you say, Oh, you know what? I've got a coupon here that is for um, free, a free appetizer. All right, cool. So now instead of being 200, it's 175. And then you say, oh, you know what? I have also, and this is a really stupid restaurant, a horrible restaurant that does not say you can't combine coupons. Let's just combine that. Just, just kind of just add that. And then you say, oh, I got to, you know, some two for ones on my, my, on my entrees. And there's four people there. It's like, oh, so you say two for ones, so you take half the entrees off. So that's uh, another 60 bucks off, okay? So you, you went from owing 200 to now you're down to, what was it? What do we say for the appetizers? 20, bu 20 bucks? So now you're down to 180, take another 60 off it for the, for the coupon for the um, uh, 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 main course. So now you're down to, all right, what did I say? 200, 180, take another 60 down. So you're down to 120. So start at, start at, at 200, now you're down to 120. And then, oh, you know what? I got one free dessert. You go to, you ordered two, that's okay. One free dessert, take another $10 off. So basically what those are is, is when you got your, your write-offs, in a sense, you're, they're acting as kind of like a coupon. So as, 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 as money off what you would owe the government, uh, that's probably the best and easiest way to explain that. And here's some different uh, deductions, standard, standard, standard and itemized deductions on page 63, 64, they go over the standard deductions, itemized deductions, um, you know, standard deductions are just, you know, your standard deductions are just basically kind of like your, um, your filing status, like, you know, you're single married, filing jointly, that's basically just, that's just kind of, in a sense, baked into the cake of, 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 of what you, what you can get off. And then itemize, that's when you kind of get, get, you start adding more of those coupons on, you know, and those, those write-offs, those, those deductions. And that you can get a little bit creative with that medical and dental expenses, uh, state and local, uh, income tax sales, that kind of stuff. Um, charitable contributions is a good one. You can write up charitable contribution, any type of, uh, losses that, that, that you've had, um, uh, like kind of casualty losses, right? Like, like insurance wise, you can have, um, moving expenses. Um, I'm sorry, moving, moving expenses is not. So there's, uh, yes, yeah, so that's when you kind of can get creative and that's when it's really important to have the CPA. Um, cause that, that person really knows, um, what you, uh, especially in your situation, sometimes a good CPA, I had a same CPA for 20 years. Every year, I, every year I say I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave him. But you know, and he's a good guy. I like him. He charges way too much, but because um, I, I needed it for, 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 because I had businesses. Um, but now I'm kind of transitioning to just being a, kind of a W two guy. I do have something on the side. Um, it makes more sense to not have a CPA. But a good CPA, kind of their job is to not expose you for um, an audit. And just to, so you can kind of just operate under the radar. Um, I mean, you're going to be paying your legal share and your fair share taxes, but just to kind of um, keep you under the radar for any type of, from the IRS. Uh, tax credits. These are kind of more just this amount that you can take off of the bottom or at the end of your taxes. More like kind of coupons, I guess you could say. There's a thousand dollar child tax credit. So if you have a child, pay a thousand dollars a year. You take that, uh, you, you take that off. Um, 13, there's a 13,400 adoption tax credit, which is really, that's huge. That's that, that's that first year. There's solar tax credits. There's, um, you know, I mean, like, you know, if you get a Tesla car for a while there, you get a big tax credit. So if you, you know, they give you an extra $5,000 off, off of your tax bill, um, which is a huge incentive. And there's a big argument to be made there about like, you know what, instead of taxing people, um, incentivize, incentivize people um, to, act in a way instead of punishing people uh estimated taxes now these dates have completely changed in the in the world of covid okay oh, that's a typo right there uh let me see 
like let's say you don't receive a traditional paycheck um you would basically in your say that you're you're self-employed you would have your four quarterly filings um for some businesses it's about eight hundred dollars every every um filing period and that's basically you're just kind of staying um you're staying within the rules you're paying the government a little bit uh for every 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 quarter so on april 15th june 15th september 15th january 15th you basically pay um your you call me your your estimated quarterlies and then whatever you would oh let's say, let's say you're paying eight hundred dollars that was the that was a, a kind of a popular amount so you paid eight hundred dollars in your quarterlies into the year it's thirty two hundred dollars then you do your taxes work out your how much how much you would owe and let's say you ended up owing five thousand dollars you take your five you take the 32 um take your five thousand subtract that 32 since you've already paid that in and you know you know eighteen hundred dollars um that's just a kind of a simple example of how that works april 15th that is the um that's the normal um the normal time to to, to, to pay your taxes uh but then COVID happened and everything kind of got screwed up so that's usual that that's a very common date is a, april 15th people always say you know it's two constants in life in life two, two constants in life are death and taxes and april 15th is known as is generally known as tax day but because everything that happened this year they moved it back um to july and then the extension was october 15th um uh and you can get extended we have to file for the extension and i've done extensions all the time for the last 20 years I've been, I've been i've been doing extensions um and there's nothing and there's there's nothing wrong with that they're there for, they're there for you they're for a, uh, for a reason um so extensions to be given out but you make sure you have to make sure you file that extension you make sure you file extension before the tax um uh, before the date the taxes are due amended returns people make mistakes everybody makes mistakes i was talking yesterday or a couple days ago to a hugh to a uh, senior partner at a um big uh, 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 CPA firm, and they're talking specifically about amended returns. They, we know that people make mistakes, people's lives can change, you could forget documents, so you can amend or alter your tax returns if there is an error by you. Um, okay, I should recap one. If there is an um, error by you, uh, your accountant, and you have up to three years to do that. So, um, and sometimes you can get strategic with that too. You can say, um, three years ago, you owed, you know, owned like $5,000 and then something changed and you didn't realize at the time and, and through conversation with your CPA, like, oh, you know what? There's a, there is a change in your life and something that happened that you can potentially go back three years and you can amend it. So that basically, instead of you owing 5,000, you amend it, you can get money back from the government. So. Um, that's why it's crucially important to have a good CPA or certified public accountant um, who's updated and who knows the tax, the tax rules and the tax laws, because it's, uh, yeah, it's crucially important um, because they're going to know how to save, save you money, how you can keep the most amount of, amount of money for yourself. And they should be acting as kind of like an advisor for you, an advocate for you. And um really kind of, you know, looking out, you know, for your best interest. It's not just somebody that you go to and you do your taxes. They really want to keep you, you know, you long-term. Um, audited returns. I know everybody's, you know, always freaked out about, oh my God, am I going to get an audit? What, what is an audit? The IRS just randomly selects, you know, tax return and wants to make sure people, it's done correctly. Um, less than 1% of returns are audited. Uh, and the IRS can only go back um, uh, no more than seven years. So there's no reason for you to keep any tax documents that's longer, that is longer than or older than, than seven years, unless you, you know, collect these kind of a things like, you know, along with, you know, Pokemon cards or, or, uh, you know, baseball cards or, you know, or who knows collectibles. There's no reason for you to, for you. actually, I would, you, you should just shred them because it has personal information on there, like your IRS, I mean, like your social security number um, and stuff. But there are certain certain times there are certain triggers, certain type of write offs. If you like, if you were if you're living in your house and you have um, you can write off, I think it used to be fifteen percent of um, it might be up to twenty now. Of uh, if you're working for home, which is going to be really challenging now. And let's say you live in a thousand square foot, just make it easy home. You own the home. 15% you can, you can write off uh, and then you have a 
you know, a 100 square foot bedroom and you basically use that 100 square foot bedroom for work, you can technically write off a certain percentage of your mortgage for that bedroom space. That sometimes it sounds good, but sometimes that is a trigger. Those kind of things are triggers for, for audits. If you're doing anything fine, doing anything on the up and up, don't worry about it. But, um, and all the auditors will do, they'll, they'll basically, they'll take all the sections of, uh, of, 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 of your expenses and your, um, what you reported, and they'll just take one at random and say, okay, let's go through these. It could be your mileage if you're, if you drive a lot for, um, your, your, if uh, you're in sales or something like that. They'll take one and they'll just make sure and go through everything with a fine tooth comb. Make sure everything's right. And um, it could be meals. You know, you, you wrote off a bunch of meals that you took, you know, a, a, you know uh, uh, clients out to. Um, and I think the, the, the total for that was the maximum, was it 4,000 or 7,000 a while ago of, uh, of the gross, uh, you can write off in 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 in, in meals and um, in entertainment. So, and those they'll take one 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 section, and they'll just kind of go and say, okay, you got to prove all this stuff. And here's what happens: if they prove it, and you're wrong. They're not going to throw you in jail. What they're going to do is say, okay, you said that you owed, you know what, in this category, a thousand dollars. Really, you owed, you know, eighteen hundred dollars. So you're gonna have to pay that difference plus a penalty or fine. And then, and then that's, and then, then, then you move on. Um, here's different forms you can do 1040, 1040 easy form. Most of these are computer-based now. It's super easy. If you're, if you're just getting like a regular check, you know, you're working at a, um, you know, a sales job or in a restaurant, it's super easy. Now here we're going to get the good stuff here. Tax evasion versus tax avoidance, right? Tax evasion. We've heard it with, you know, uh, there's some reports came out against, you know, President Trump that he wasn't paying his, his, his share in taxes. Tax evasion is, well, there's tax avoidance and tax evasion. They both sound bad. Tax evasion is illegal. That's the illegal act of failing to accurately report income or deductions or failing to pay taxes altogether. That is illegal. You cannot do that. Um, and if you are in a situation where you haven't paid your taxes in a while, all I can recommend is just do it. Just get that situation, get that ball rolling. It's not going to be as bad as you think, unless it's been, you know, what, 20 years and you've made a lot of money. Um, it's going to be uh, not going to be uh, as bad as, as, as bad as you think. So get that going. Tax, so tax evasion is, is illegal. You, can, you have to legally pay your taxes. However, tax avoidance is completely legal. It's that game. Um, it's a way to creatively reduce taxes that are legal and within the laws, the law and the intent of Congress. Congress sets up tax laws basically to incentivize people to behave in a certain way that's going to stimulate economic growth. And, um, and the, the laws are out there for you. The, uh, the, the system is basically made for you to use more coupons in a sense. So tax evade, evasion, illegal, tax avoidance, completely. This one's illegal, evasion, avoidance, completely legal. Tax-free income, very few examples of tax-free income. There's some municipal bonds and uh, in some situations, Roth IRAs. Tax deferred, if you ever heard somebody say tax deferred, that means you don't have to pay tax, immediately tax-free for that for that year, but eventually taxes will be, will be due, most likely if you have um, an investment um, or you uh, put money into a certain um, kind of holding investment, you won't have to pay that the taxes at that time. However, when you sell that, you would you would have to pay taxes, and it would just and that would just be depending on um, uh, most likely the capital gains taxes during that year when you make that sale. So, um, so that's taxes. Good stuff. Um, this should be. I'm gonna you know obviously you're gonna be watching this, and then I'll put it up on YouTube and uh, send it to you. And keep your eye out. I'm going to have some more videos up for you for some calculation, um, some ratios, calculations, and budgets coming up shortly. So um, any questions, you know how to get in touch with me, jducere at citruscollege.edu or d-u-s-s-e-r-r-e -S -S -E -R -R -E at chapman.edu. You guys, um, I really admire everything that you're doing. You're rock stars. And I will, I will see you guys soon. Oh, yeah. And my office hours are Tuesdays 1 to 2. And I'll, I send out the uh, Zoom link. 
So you can hop on that um, Tuesdays from one to, one to two if you have any questions. All right, take care. Bye.